My friends, have I got some news for you. Today I am bullish and let's jump in. U.S. jobs growth cools in March. Of course, today we had NFP, which if you enjoyed the live stream today, uh, or if you missed it today, make sure to hit the notification bell on the channel here. We do go live for major news events, and I was live for this morning's uh, results. Well, the U.S. economy created 236,000 jobs in March, which is actually the least since December of 2020 and almost matching market expectations of 239K, pointing to a gradual cooling in the labor market as high borrowing costs and prices are forcing companies to cut costs. Meanwhile, the jobless rate edged down to 3.5% below market expectations of 3.6. Okay, why is this bullish? Well, there's a lot to unpack here. Let's jump into the charts and we'll start there. So first of all, the markets reacted very bullish to this. You can see the NASDAQ 100 absolutely launched on this news. Why? Why would cooling jobs be so positive for the stock market and the indices uh, themselves? Well, let's take a look at this. We have one word that we need to talk about. It's the Fed, right? We've talked about this over and over for the last couple of years as this has been our primary focus when it comes to indices, gold, the dollar, et cetera. Well, guys, when we have jobs numbers cooling, that is in line with what the Fed wants. Why would the Fed want cooling jobs market? Well, because the jobs market, if more people are out there and they're getting jobs, they're going out and they're spending money and, you know, more money changing hands to different people out there is, you know, causing a uh, rise in inflation, which is, again, the Federal Reserve's number one priority right now, at least according to their own statements. Their goal is to get that inflation down to 2%. Right now, we are hovering above 6%. So in order for us to get there, we need the jobs market, which is a major contributor to inflation, to cool off. Well, we saw that today. We saw evidence of that and the markets loved it. They said, hey, that is really bullish because again, the Fed is gonna be off our back about raising rates and getting this thing crushed down to a point where you know uh, jobs are, are getting crazy. But again, it wasn't terrible either. Unemployment ticked down and things are still healthy enough that could contribute to a strong enough stock market uh, due to the fact that more people are out there spending money, businesses, so on and so forth will do well. I am actually bullish today. Uh, and I wanna go through this with you guys today because I am looking officially for buying opportunities on the S&P 500. I think we're at a point where the stock market looks attractive and pullbacks look really good. I have my eye on 4105 right now that marks this point here where we broke to the upside and pulled. Uh, if we do pull back, I'm interested in long opportunities. Now, the market's closed early today for an observance of Black Friday. So, um, Black Friday. Wrong, sir. Wrong. Wrong Friday. Um, in observance of Good Friday here. So for my friends who, who uh, may be celebrating, uh, enjoy that, spend some time with some family, that sort of thing. Uh, but again, the S&P 500, uh, in my view, is a buy on a pullback in going into next week. So if we take a look at this uh, on the Edge Finder, we officially have a bullish reading for the S&P 500. Now, when I say bullish, what I mean is a plus three score or more gets us a bullish reading on uh, a particular asset. And the part of the reason is because unemployment numbers came out today and things overall get a nice bullish perspective here for the S&P. Now, I should caution you one thing that is concerning is that there is still a pretty heavy short bias from institutional traders on the edge uh, on the edge finder here. We've got the COT data pulled in, still short bias there. However, so is the retail the crowd. The retail crowd is shorting the S&P 500 as it rallies, which is a positive benef uh, benefit in terms of um, the edge finder scoring. So in my personal opinion, there's enough here, enough evidence to look for opportunities to get long on a pullback. So I will be looking at that myself going into next week. Let's talk about gold. This morning I had an embarrassing moment where I was doing some market analysis on gold and the gold market wasn't even moving today due to Good Friday. So that was really embarrassing. Um, I was looking at the chart and I'm doing all my analysis and I was like, wait a second, this thing is not moving. And everyone in the chat was uh, flaming me. It was awesome. No! No! You know, the life of, of uh, YouTubers, sometimes you make mistakes publicly and it's okay. Anyways, um, Gold going into next week, I guess, is where I'd want to focus. I'm still bullish on gold, uh, especially if the Federal Reserve looks to start 
cooling and even being more uh, dovish going into the back half of this year. I think gold will fly. And this is my personal opinion, of course, as everything is on this channel. I'm not a financial advisor. I am sharing my opinions and, and doing my thing. Uh, I am looking to hold on to my gold trade. Now, again, I picked up gold earlier this week. I shared that signal within, inside of our Discord channel, uh, and I continue to watch it and trail stops. My stop loss is marked here. Uh, I am looking for this as long as price is able to stay above 2000 next week. I'll look to continue holding on to my gold trade. Speaking of the Discord channel, again, you can see all the trades being taken by myself, Frank, and Ivan, our team here at A1. Uh, and if you'd like access to that, again, we've trailed stop loss on gold. Things have been really, really hot recently. We've been very biased to the upside on gold. Frank's been trading the same thing. If you guys want access to this uh, and access to our software, we're running a once in a year level sale price. We're doing a 40% off discount sale. If you use the code YTVIP down below uh, in the description, you've got access links to pick up the edge finder for yourself or access to our Discord channel. However, I wanna take one second, if you made it this far into the video, a special subscriber discount is available if you head over to our website and have a chat with one of our team members. Now, when I say team members, I have a couple people uh, trained to teach people how to use the Edge Finder, walk people through it, give them tours, give them you know all the information they need about the software. If you'd like access to the Edge Finder, but you have some questions, or you'd like an even bigger discount, click the link and head over here and click, tell me about your discounts. It's gonna take you to a site uh, where you can chat with us directly. And if you click, tell me about your discounts, you'll get extra discounted rates off of our products today due to the uh, the discount that we're running. So take advantage of that, don't miss out on that. Uh, in terms of the rest of the market, let's take a look at the dollar and how things went. The dollar was up today, which why would that be the case? Well, economic numbers were pretty strong and, and you have to sort of wonder in terms of a global reserve currency, which, by the way, recently has sort of been challenged by the BRICS nations. Uh, if you've heard a little bit of the, the developments there, Brazil and China have plans to do trade between one another, leaving the U.S. out of it. Now, a lot of global trade does involve uh, the U.S. dollar, as many banks and foreign entities have and hold on to US dollars to do trade. Well, that seems to be a decreasing factor, especially between like Brazil and China. If you guys have any knowledge on this or you would like to share comments, I invite you, light up the comment section, let me know your thoughts. I'm very, very curious to hear your thoughts as it's something that I'm sort of just scratching the surface on myself and learning about. Uh, the relationship between, for example, Brazil and China or Saudi Arabia is another very, very hot spot talked about uh, in terms of the oil trade. Uh, it does have some threatening factors to the dollar that could be, you know, a bigger story unfolding is, you know, is the dollar going to sort of get squeezed out of the picture in some of these uh, trade entities. And for quite a while, the dollar has enjoyed a lot of uh, strength globally due to it being sort of the predominant global reserve currency. Is that fleeting? We'll see. But right now, in terms of a technical analysis perspective of the US dollar, we have lower highs and lower lows. And in terms of a technical perspective, as price comes up into this area, I am generally more on the bearish side of the dollar as assets like gold and S&P especially look attractive due to the Fed's uh, potentially more dovish sounding back half of 2023. But on top of that, guys, I want to show you the retail sentiment tab. And again, this is another example how I'll be able to show you the cool features of the Edge Finder. And again, I'm transparent about I want people to buy the software. I think it is a very useful tool and more people should use it. So let's use some examples of how I'm actually using it in my own trading. Dollar Swiss, take a look at this. 88% of retail traders are long dollar Swiss. Why does that matter? Well, if the retail trader on average is super bullish on something, I try and stay away from it. Not 100% of the time, but often enough. Because again, if we know the retail trader is piled into a certain trade, it can be a red flag, uh, as oftentimes they will chase losers and be on the wrong side of great trends. Now, to be fair, AUD, USD, they are long biased on the dollar, I'm sorry, short biased on the dollar, favoring the AUD. But if we keep going down the list, you can see a preference towards the dollar on the CAD, uh, dollar CAD. Uh, NZD, USD, they're, they're preferring 
uh, are preferring the sh uh, the short side of the NZD. USD JPY slight bias towards the dollar there from retail traders. Euro USD heavy preference for the dollar there. Uh, gold heavy preference for the dollar there, and pound heavy preference for the dollar there. So it seems to be the case that across the board there's a lot of bullishness on the dollar from retail traders, despite a strong downward trend. So in my opinion, this is a red flag and actually even looks sort of more on the bearish camp for the dollar trade. Now, where can we go with this dollar trade? Well, I think very reasonably heading right back down if the trend continues to, to this uh, 101.5, uh, is that right? 101.4 level here, the previous low, but perhaps even taking a, a, a move beyond that is in the cards. And again, this dollar trade had made a move all the way down to levels like 100 and uh, I'm sorry, 101 on the dot there. And so it's possible that if we do get a little momentum up again, if the dollar bearish case does come in strong, whether it be from the BRICS nation stuff, or in my view, more likely, just a simple uh, Federal Reserve being more increasingly dovish, uh, hey, 101 seems increasingly likely in my personal view for the dollar. Hey, guess what? I just found a video made just for you. Click this video to help with your trading, and uh, thanks for watching.